Well, hello everyone and welcome to Hello Cricket today. Beautiful Monday. Um, very excited to introduce you to Cricket or tell you more about the different Cricket machines if you're already familiar with Cricket. We have a webinar scheduled for today. So that means that we'll, we have our Q&A section open. So if you wanna get questions answered, please drop them in the Q&A. I have Lindsay and Joy on the back end helping me answer those questions and get those questions over to me if I can answer them live. We will also open up our chat so you can communicate with us that way. If you have any um, technical questions or anything like that, please DM Felicia and she can help you out there. Let's see, what else do we have? I feel like I'm missing something. Just want to give you an overview of how we're going to run the class and sort of how we're going to provide information to you. I'll be doing a slideshow to go over the different cutting machines that are available with Cricut. We'll talk about the different materials that are used with each machine. And then we'll talk about some of the extra um, Cricut items that make crafting super easy. So welcome in. Settle into your seat, grab a notebook. We're going to share a lot of information directly to you and hopefully answer any questions you may have. So why don't we just go ahead and get started. Here we go with our fabulous Hello Cricket. So some of you may be familiar with um, Brene, Renee Brown. I love her her quotes, Brene Brown, I said that wrong, sorry. I love using her quotes. And this one really as a crafter speaks to me um, that we are born makers. We move what we're learning from our heads to our hearts through our hands. And Cricut machines can help you design and customize almost anything. With a Cricut machine, you can cut hundreds of materials, but you can also write and draw with the Cricut machine. Now, before we get started telling you about Cricut, we'd like to know a little bit more about you. If you wouldn't mind going ahead and dropping in the chat a little bit of information for us to help make sure we're catering this class to answer your questions. The first thing we'd like to know is if you're brand new to Cricut, you don't own a Cricut machine, um, or if you're upgrading or changing or adding to your Cricut um, library of machines. So let us know if you're brand new to Cricut or if you're an existing Cricut user. And then if you'll also let us know what types of projects you want to use your Cricut machine to create. And we can sort of help navigate you to get the right machine that best fits your needs. So if you want to just go ahead, pop that into the chat. First thing is, are you new to Cricut or are you an existing Cricut customer? And then the second thing is, what do you want to create? Now, I know as crafters, when you go out and you see things, you have like a bazillion ideas and you walk through and you're like, oh, I could make that. I could make that. I could make that. But let us know just maybe what your top two or three project groupings are that you want to master and get really good at. So go ahead and pop those right into the chat. And then if you, again, if you have any direct questions, put them in the Q&A and Lindsay and Joy are on the back side to answer those questions and feed any over to me as we go along. All right, so without further ado, let's talk about who should, um, sorry, I just hit something on my screen. Who should have a Cricut cut, Smart Cutting Machine? I can, get a little bit passionate about Cricut and what I can create with them, so much so that I think everyone should have at least one Cricut machine. We all have our weaknesses, right? And there are worse things you could, you could be addicted to. Well, Cricut is certainly one of my addictions. When deciding which machine is the right fit for you, think about your crafting lifestyle. What is it like? Which means which machine will fit your needs? You want to select a Cricut machine that could be your number, your plus one on an RSV, your plus one on your RSVP card. You know, the one that gets you, the one that gets your creative soul. So what I'd like to do is introduce you to the Cricut machine, meet the family, the Cricut family. We have three different groupings of Cricut machines. So the first one over here on the left is called the Cricut Joy. And then in the middle, we have the Cricut Explore Air 2. 
as well as the Cricut Maker. So these are the three different groups of machines. Now over the summer, Cricut introduced a brand new set of machines called the Generation 3. And we added to the Explore family with an Explore 3, and we added to the Maker family with a Maker 3. So today to start off with, we're gonna explore all the different machines and sort of give you an overview of what each machine can do and how the machines differ from each other, not only from one family to the other family, but within, the fam within each family. So why don't we start off with the Cricut Joy. The Cricut Joy is absolutely perfect for personalizing, customizing, and organizing. It is the smallest Cricut machine. It's simple and compact. It's perfect for quick everyday projects like cards, labels, and vinyl stickers. So the beauty of the Cricut Joy being compact is it only weighs, it, weighs, it comes in under four pounds. And it is so tiny that it will fit in a cubby hole. You can travel with it. So if you find yourself having to wait, um, I know I, I spent lots of time at the gym waiting for my cheerleader to be done with meets and, and practices. And I could have taken this with me and had this right working next to me as I went along. The Cricut Joy has one housing where the blade and the pen are inserted. So with the Cricut Joy, you can cut over 50 different materials and you can cut with a mat or without a mat using our smart materials. Now, what are smart materials? Because I'll talk about smart materials a lot. So smart materials are materials that you don't, that do not require a mat to cut with. They cut right on the machine. You don't need a mat. Um, now, other materials like permanent vinyl, repositionable vinyl, or iron-on vinyl, you can still use those in all the machines, and you just simply put them on a mat, a cutting mat. So some other, talking about mats, some other unique things about the Cricut Joy is that it has a special mat called the card mat, and the card mat allows you to insert a folded card onto the mat and only cut one side of the mat. Cricut Joy is also very unique in that it works with um, the Cricut Joy app. It's the only machine that has its own unique app on, that you can use on a tablet device or a phone device. So let's go over a few of the different um, projects you can create using a Cricut Joy. I may not have mentioned this, but Cricut Joy being one of our smaller machines does have a four and a half inch footprint. So you can cut material four and a half inches wide, but super long when using uh, smart materials. So you can cut up to 20 feet using the smart materials. Now you can cut the labels I mentioned are super easy to cut with vinyl. Here's a sample of one of the cards that was cut with the Cricut Joy, you can use the pens in the single housing tool and write on vinyl and create your own labels. So lots of fun things and lots of um, creativity that you can do with the Cricut Joy. Now, as we move along to some of the other family members, the Explore machine, this one really can help make your dreams come true. Let me slide over. So the Explore machine is probably our most popular and favorite machine that we have. The Explore machine cuts a wider, a wider footprint, so you can cut up to 12 inches. It does, the Explore Air 2 works with your cutting mat, and you can cut over 100 different materials with the Explore Air 2. Using the double housing, you can also write, draw, and score all in one machine. The Explore Air also works with, with six different cutting tools to include the premium um, fine point blade, the deep point blade, which lets you work with a little bit thicker materials, the bonded fabric blade, and the scoring stylus, as well as our foil transfer tool and the writing tools.
Now with the Explore Air 2, when you're working with fabric, you do bond, use a bonding material on the fabric and use the cutting mats when you're working with fabric on the Explore Air 2. Now the cutting mats are allow you to cut 12 by 12, 12 inches wide by 12 inches long, or goes as long as 24 inches. So let's take a little bit closer look at the Explore Air. As you come in, you can see it's, I love the sleek design of this, um, of this machine and how easily it fits onto a desktop or a countertop. So you can really place it in a variety of areas wherever you craft. It does have a cover that will close and keep your housing clean. So, you know, you don't have to worry about any dust or anything getting in there. And as you zoom into the housing, this is what we talk about with housing. So the Explore Air 2 has two housings. It has clamp A, which will hold a pen or a stylus tool, and then clamp B, which holds your specialty blades like the the craft um, fabric bonded bonded fabric blade, as well as your um, fine point blade and the um, foil blade all work in the clamp B. Now, as you move over, you'll notice that you have a tab on the butt on the top, and this is how you open the machine, as well as a little storage area in the back to hold your weeding tools, um, pens or scissors. And what makes, makes the Explore Air 2 a really easy machine to use is this dial. The dial allows you to select, and it narrows down your material selections. So it has about 10 different materials on the top. So if you're using vinyl or iron-on a lot, it's super easy to just adjust that dial and select your machine, your material type that you'll be working with. The top also has these three buttons to load and unload your mat to start begin the cutting and also to pause the cutting. Now look at all of the fun things you can create with the Explore Air 2. So with the Explore Air 2 and using the cutting mat, you can really do a lot of different um, paper projects like this card down here, the folded card. You can make scrapbook pages as well as iron on and make t-shirts or pillowcases. And you can even work with the infusible ink materials and make these fabulous um, coasters. So you really, the Explore and the Explore Air 2 are great machines if you're getting into craft, if you're a big crafter and you're just getting into using Cricut Smart Materials. I mean, smart machines. Um, so before I go off the Explore Air 2, I just want to see, are there any questions, Joy or Lindsay? You know, it's so cool to see what everybody's writing in the chat. I think we have a lot of new users. We have some folks who haven't taken the machines out of the box yet. Okay. And as you're thinking about, as you're presenting the different machines, here are some of the types of things people would like to use or would like to work with. We have um, some questions about remembering which material goes on which type of mat. Mm -hmm. There are stents, people are curious about stenciling, cards, signs, t-shirts, cheer bows, sport related things for kids, bags, uniforms, etc. So we're reading through everything over here. Awesome. And we're super excited about, about who's in the class and who we're talking to. So thank you for coming today. Kesley will give you all kinds of great ideas. We will, and I'm fabulous. I love that somebody wants to learn about cheer bows. That's, that is one of my specialties. <laughs> so those are, those are super fun and, and easy to use on. You can really make them on any of the machines um, using the Cricut Joy or the Explore or the Maker. But before we go on to the Maker, I really want to talk about the um, Explore Air 3, which is the machine that was announced over the summer with Cricut. Now, the Explore Air 3, it is really just a fast machine. It really keeps it simple. So it takes all the great features in the Explore Air and adds to it. 
So you'll notice that you have some sleek design enhance enhancements. Um, like, let me see if I have my next slide. I think shows a close up of it. Okay, let me go back one step. So you'll we will go over some sleek uh, design enhancements with the Explore Three that vary from the two, and you'll also notice that this the key differences are really in the technology of the Explore 3 and the Explore 2. So there's an innovation in speed, in your cut length, using smart materials that allow you to cut without a mat. So let's go over some of the, the key features of the Explore Air 3. So now when I say, and I, when I use the term air, what I'm referring to is the Bluetooth functionality. The, all of our machines, actually the Joy, the Explorer 2s, the Explorer 3, and the Maker and the Maker 3 are all compatible with Bluetooth. And so it doesn't have to be hardwired into a desktop for you to communicate with the machines. They're all, um, you can do it all through the air, if you will. Now, some of the key features of the Explore 3 are that it works with the smart materials. So like the Explore Air worked with the cutting mat, the Explore 3 also works with the cutting mat and smart materials. So again, smart materials are a set of vinyls and like iron on vinyl, permanent vinyl and removable vinyl that are all geared to work without a cutting mat and allow you to cut, make a much longer cut. So it cuts up to 12 feet using smart materials. And you'll notice when you're using smart materials that the machine actually cuts faster. Not only does the machine cut faster with the smart materials, but using smart materials allows you to be a faster crafter. So for example, I was making some t-shirts this summer and, and for the whole family. So I was cutting out a vinyl design, an iron on vinyl design. Normally, I could maybe get two of the design cut on a 12 by 24 inch mat. But with smart materials, I was able to cut 12 of the same design in one cut. I didn't have to load and unload a mat and remove and reposition my vinyl. It just sucked it all in and did it all in one pass. So that's a super exciting thing. Now the Explore 3 also works with 100 plus materials. So you can do materials like cardstock, vinyl, iron-on, there's specialty materials that you can use. Um, glitter, glitter paper and leather are just some of the examples that you can work with on the Explore machines. So they also have the two port system where you can put your writing tools and your stylus tools as well as your cutting tools. The other great key feature be between the Explore Air 2 and the Explore 3 is that you can use the same um, cutting tools. So if you're upgrading, if you have an Explore 2 and you're looking to add to your to your library of machines, you can use the same tools that you used in the Explore Air 2 in the Explore 3. And I think that that's a, that's a key, um, that would be key for me if I were looking to upgrade between those machines. So let's take a little bit of a closer look at the Explore 3. One of the key difference, and I talked about that sleek design, your top, when it opens up on the Explore 3, has a ledge for your iPad. So if you're working with design space on a tablet device, you can you know, have this right in the family room while you're watching TV and cut. You can take it then to the bedroom or take it to the basement. It's super portable in that way, that it doesn't have to be um, hardwired to anything. You can use a tablet or a phone device and really makes it uh, easy for you to walk around the house with it, I think. So then as you zoom in, you notice that we have the clamp A and the clamp B, which are the same clamps that are on the Explore Air 2. So those are the same features. Our ledge to hold the tablet device. Now you'll notice the dial is no longer on the Explore 3. And that's really because the expanded materials um, 
we, we encourage you to use design space and select your material through the software because there are so many different types of materials to use and each material has been tested and settings have been created in design space that ensure you get a good clean cut every time. You'll also notice that the power button has been moved over to the right side here, as well as the load and unload, the play and the pause buttons. There they are there. And as you slide across the top, you'll notice that we have now two device holders um, on the left side, as well as the open and close button for the lids. So now when you're working, when you're thinking about the Explore 3 and all the different things you can, um, you can create with it, you can, the Explore Air 3 does everything that the Air 2 does, except you cut, you can cut wider material and you can cut longer. So your material is 13 inches wide in the 3 versus 12 inches wide in the 2 in the Explore Air. And you can cut um, 19 feet, nine, nine, not 19 feet, it's more than that, um, on the, I think it's, tw it's 12 feet long with the smart material versus two feet long with the Explore Air. So let me say that again, because I kind of mangled it. <laughs> the material width is different between the um, Explore 2 and the Explore 3 if you're using smart material. So the smart material is 13 inches wide on the Explore 3. On your um, e Explore Air, you can use 12 inches wide. So you have a little bit difference there. But the big difference is on the Explore 3, you can use the smart materials, which don't require a mat and allow you to cut as long as your smart materials are. So your mats on the Explore Air, the longest you can do is 24 inches, with the Explore Air 3, you can cut as long as your material is. Okay, so like you can cut 12 feet versus just two feet. So it makes it perfect if you're planning on doing longer projects, if you have, um, if you're doing larger quantities of the same project, it really does allow you to cut more quicker. Now, when I first heard about the the um, longer cutting, I was like, okay, that's cool, but would I really use it? And then I started looking at all of the amazing projects you can create using the longer materials, things like this longer welcome sign. You can cut that in one, in one pass and put it on the board in one pass, keeping your spacing um, the way you have it in design space, which I thought was really a cool idea. And then it makes it easier to install that on your, on your board. And then also creating things like the, um, the giraffes over the headboard, being able to create a nine foot giraffe head or three foot giraffe head and not having to cut it into different pieces and then piece it together would really be a game changer if you were working on home decor projects and things like that. Um, so it, it, it's a great, it, it definitely added to my desire for that machine. So the next machine we have, the next member of our family is the maker machine. Now the maker machine offers more tools and therefore more possibilities on what you can create. So let's talk about some of the key features in the maker machine. So the maker is the ultimate smart cutting machine with amazing DIY performance and versatility. So what does that mean? The maker machine can cut over 300 different materials. It can cut um, cardstock, vinyl, and iron-on, just like the Explore, but with the added tools, you can cut things like leather, more delicate papers, um, mat board, fabric without having it to be bonded. You can cut thick things like basswood. So it's really great. It, it allows you to cut even more materials. And what allows that to happen is the quick swap tools. Now the quick swap tools are, that's, say that in a mouth, that's a big mouthful. The quick swap tools, and I have them here, I'll, I'll try and pull one out. The tools work as a, they're in and have a gear. So this is the rotary blade here. And the gear allows, the gear 
works with the machine and it rotates and twists the blade in a different way than the Explore Air 3 does. And it allows you to cut more materials as well as by using different tips to uh, do different, um, different types of techniques. So it has a um, scoring blade where we have the scoring stylus in the Explore Air 2. The maker has a scoring blade it also has an engraving blade, a debossing blade, and um, other decorative blades like um, there's a wavy blade and a perforation blade. So you can really expand on your crafting. If you're a card maker, um, the Explore Air is a great machine to have or the Cricut Joy. And then if you want to take your card making to another level and create pull tabs, then you would want to go for a maker that offers the perforation tool. So I feel like the maker is sort of like it lets you just do almost anything that you want to that you you're interested in creating. Um, you're really only limited by your creative idea. So when we asked you um, at the beginning, like put tell us what you want to make. If you wanted to make something like leather earrings, or if you were interested in making quilts and making it easier to cut out um, applique designs, then that's where the maker and the rotary blade really come into play for you. Um, creating something like in this slide here, this puzzle is so easy to do using the, um, the knife blade and really getting into those deeper, heavier materials like this, this type of material here. And now once, now the, again, the difference between the Maker 3 and the Maker, the original Maker, now you're probably wondering why, that where's the Maker 2? So Cricut went from the Maker to the Maker 3. So everything was on, they were at the same level. So there's not a Maker 2, um, but the Maker 3 offers a more powerful, versatile and revolutionary experience, just like the Air um, the Explore 3 does. So some of the key feature difference, differences between the Maker and the Maker 3 is the Maker 3, again, is compatible with smart materials. So where your Maker, if you're cutting on the mat, you can cut 12 inches by 24 inches long on your vinyls and your iron-ons, whereas with the Maker 3 and using smart materials, you can make much longer cuts. Um, you can, so that so that's the that's one of the big differences, and it also will cut again two times faster when you're working with smart materials. The Maker Three does still give you the capability to cut over 300 different materials, and your blades that you were using, if you had a Maker, and you want to upgrade to a Maker Three, your cutting tools will still work between the two machines. So that's the quick swap tool allows you to just quickly, you keep your base, but just change out the tip of your tool. And you can use all those tools interchangeably between the maker and the maker three. So now again, the maker, the maker three with the longer cut allows you to cut um, longer signs like this one, or I loved these designs that were in the cubby holes and just being able to cut those into one, you know, four foot section is super easy. If you want to make a border wall or something like that, and being able to cut that as one cut is fabulous. These, if you're into making cards, so these cards here are ideas for like reward cards with a tear off perforation. So as somebody accomplishes something, they can just tear that right off and, and get a reward for doing it. If you have a side hustle and you're making t-shirts or something, you know, that's longer vinyl cut, so you need to cut the same design over and over, that's really where the Maker 3 will help you do that faster and um, more efficiently. There's so much information to tell. I have notes. I want to make sure I don't, I don't miss a thing about it. Um, the Explore, also the, I'm sorry, the Maker 3 also does have that uh, functionality with the lid and it holds your app, your um, tablet device. So again, you can move it around and work in different areas. So those are the three different machines. Whether you're using a Joy 
or an explorer or maker, whichever family of machine works easiest for you and, and meets your crafting needs, there's still, how does it all work together? How do you take a machine and the material and how do you get it all to work? So with your um, bringing everything together, you have a lot of different choices in your machines, the three different joy maker or explore, whichever one would work for you. And then there's different devices you can work with, um, design space, whether it's a phone or a tablet device or a desktop or laptop, and then all your tools to work with the weeding tool and the, the cutter and all the different materials. So what brings all of that all together for you as the crafter? Well, it's design space, brings it all together. Design Space is the software that Cricut has developed and, and continues to make developments to the software um, to bring it all together. So back to that original quote where we take it from our head to our hearts to our hands. This is what helps you do that. So it starts with Design Space. In Design Space, you can work on a laptop or a desktop, a tablet device or a phone device. And at Michael's, we offer a Cricut 101 class to help you get started with design space. So if you have the machine, Joy mentioned, a few of you have already have the machine, but you haven't taken it out of the box, please do join us for a design space orientation class to help you learn how it all works together and get started. So design space is the software that gives you the projects, um, ideas. It has images in design space that you can work with, and it is the canvas that you build your design on and send to your machine. It, it's the creative step between yourself and your machine. So you use design space to tell your machine what you want it to do. And a part of design space is our Cricut Access. Now, Design Space is a free software. You can, everyone can use it. You can use it again on your tablet device or your phone device with an app, or you can use it on a desktop or laptop. And it's all cloud-based. So as you design, you can save your projects up to the cloud and work across the different devices. Your Cricut Access is your gateway into all of the content that is available in design space. So there's a free version of Cricut Access. So if you're, you know, if you've had it for a while or you're just getting started, you can use the free version. And you actually, when you get a new machine, you have a 30 day free trial of Cricut Access. And I really encourage you when you get your machine and you're ready to get started to activate that 30 day free trial because it really will show you all of the options that are out there and available for you to use. So again, Cricut Access, um, it, there's a free option and you have lots of images in the free option with some fonts to work with. And then you can just purchase a la carte or you can upload your own designs if you wanted to. We have the standard version, which allows you unlimited use of over 100,000 images. And I, I want to say, I think it's up to close to 200,000 images. There's over 500 different fonts and thousands of projects that are ready for you to make and complete. And then we have the premium version, which has everything the standard version has, as well as um, some other perks on materials and things like that. So there is a Cricut Access option that will work for anybody. So when you get started, which when you've selected your machine, you've selected what device you're working on and which um, Cricut Access is the right one to work for you, then we get into the materials. And the materials, um, the smart materials are these no mat required materials. You can just load it into your machine and go. So my picture here has um, the Explore 3 with the um, roll holder, and this will hold your vinyl roll as you can just load it right into the machine and then use this to slice it off. It's so fast and easy. You can cut up to a 12 foot design using smart materials and it works, smart materials work with the Explore 3 
the maker three, and the joy. Now the joy does have its own unique um, smart materials because remember at the beginning when we were talking about the different machines, the explore three, I mean, the joy machine has a four and a half inch cutting width, whereas your explore and your maker machine is much bigger. So the joy smart vinyl is sized just right for your joy machine. So you don't have to get that big roll and figure out how to cut it in the middle. You just use the joy smart material and it's sized to fit perfectly into your Cricut joy. Now you can still use smart material on an explorer or a maker. You just would continue to use your cutting mat when you're doing that. Now, when we talk about the different types of vinyl, there's two different vinyls. There's a removable vinyl and a permanent vinyl. So removable vinyl really allows you to create and customize without commitment. Um, I think of when I use removable vinyl, I do use it, tend to use it for like home decor things or something that I know I'm going to want to change out. If it's a seasonal design that, you know, maybe for Halloween, I've got uh, cardstock bats behind me, but maybe I wanted to use some vinyl and I would use removable vinyl so that at the end of Halloween, I could remove those bats and save them or use them for another project in later years. So that's the, your removable vinyl really means that you can put it on a surface and it easily removes um, and it doesn't leave any residue or a mark on your, on your surface permanent vinyl will last and last and last. It is water resistant and it is UV resistant. It lasts up to three years. Um, and it is, and I can attest, it really does. Like I have a tumbler I've had for over seven years with permanent vinyl on it. And it's still, it's still on there. And I do hand wash it. It's like this Addy tumbler here. So I do hand wash it. Um, but that's the requirement of the of the bottle it's on. But I do have some, um, some outdoor designs that I've had outside since 2018. Um, and they are still going strong. There's no fading in the color. So when we talk about permanent vinyl, it really is, it's there to stay when you use it. No matter which type of vinyl you're using, permanent vinyl or removable vinyl, you'll use something called transfer tape. And transfer tape is specifically designed to help remove the vinyl design from the backing carrier material onto your blank space. So it's a clear film, it has a grid on it, and it really makes it for simple movement of your design on from point A to point B. And now iron-on vinyl, also known as HTV, it works um, great with a huge selection of materials. You can use it on fabric. You can even use it on wood. This little design back here, my boo, I made that with um, iron-on and my signs with my bats and my pumpkins on canvas. I also made that with iron-on. So you will find that, um, if it, if it moves, it needs a monogram and you will figure out whether it's a vinyl monogram or an iron-on monogram, but you will wanna put it on everything. Now, infusible ink is also a great way to customize and personalize. Infusible ink, it transfers with heat and it permanently transfers into your base material. You do need to use specific base materials um, that are either pre-treated to take in transfer ink or are 100% polyester. So Cricut has different blanks like the pillows and the bags and the t-shirts to use um, for infusible ink. And it, it, you can't feel it. So it actually infuses into the fabric or the, the mug in this example here and you can't feel it. If you were to put vinyl on a mug, you could still feel that vinyl. Infusible ink really goes into the material. Now, and we also have a family of easy press machines, and these are our heat for heat transfer projects. So you can use this on the vinyl, on iron-on, uh, vinyl as well as the infusible ink. And I actually, somebody asked about Cheerbos. I use this when I'm working with rhinestones as well. 
Now, to learn more and to keep going, growing your knowledge base about your Cricut machines, um, Michaels, we've partnered up with Michaels to offer a lot of different classes. And coming into November and December, we really have some fun project-based classes coming up. So definitely take a moment after this class and check out some other classes. If you're new, I highly recommend you take the design space orientation and the actions in design space. And then as you get comfortable with it, join us for some of the project-based classes. So I'm gonna leave this up here on, this, on, the, on the slideshow and give us a chance to sort of talk about, talk through some of the questions you guys have asked Joy and Lindsay, I know I've done a lot of <laughs> a lot of talking and, and let's hear what you guys are asking and, and what you're thinking about. So here comes Joy. <laughs> I was gonna say somebody needs you to go over the transfer tape again. Gia has a couple questions about how to use it and is it needed for every project? Okay, so transfer tape is when you cut something out of, let me, you know me, let me just go grab something real quick. <laughs> So when you've cut something, oh, this probably wasn't a good one to get because it's kind of dark. You know Kesley, you might want to um, go oh. ahead and take down the comparison chart so we can see what you're holding up. There you there go. go. Good thing. Okay, so this, I should have gotten something with color. This, um, this is a vinyl that I have weeded. And what, when you want to move this, the, your weeded vinyl onto a glass or a tumbler or something like that, you don't want to just pick it up with your fingers and move it. So you use transfer tape like th this has, this was weeded and it's got the transfer tape on it. So when I take it off the backing, the design stays on the transfer tape. And we do, we, we do go over this in the, um, in our next class, but the design comes right off the transfer tape. So then I just take my transfer tape and put it on my tumbler and I make my design that way. So you use transfer tape when you're working with um, vinyl, not with iron-on, just with vinyl. All right. Thank you, Kesley. Yeah. Um, I think overall we have a couple of questions about how Bluetooth and Wi-Fi really work and what's the difference and then how does the computer talk to the machine? And you might want to talk about both the Bluetooth and the fact that there is a cable that you can use. Yes. So you can, um, so Bluetooth works um, wirelessly. So if you're working on a tablet device or phone device, I, if I'm designing on my desktop, I tend to have my machine next to me and it is wired, like hardwired into the back of my computer. And I just send my, my designs over that way. But like Cricut Joy doesn't have the hardwire and Cricut Joy only works with Bluetooth. So I will use like a lot of times when I'm working with my Cricut Joy, I'll use my phone or my tablet and the app on my phone or tablet to send the designs to my Cricut Joy. So the Bluetooth allows you to have, you don't have to be connected to your device. So your device could be, you could be working on one part of a room and your machine could be across the room and you could design and send your machine, your design to your machine. Now you still do have to go to the machine and um, put in your mat or your materials to cut with. But the Bluetooth functionality is, is really good because you don't, it doesn't, you're not limited and you don't have a cord that you, is keeping you tied to it. So it's like a ball and chain. <laughs> Think of it like that. Um, and the, I do, I, the only other time I'll, I will make sure my machine is hardwired in is if I'm working on a big project um, and I don't want my Bluetooth to cut out on me or have anything funky happen. I do, um, I, I make sure I'm, I'm hardwired in, but that's it. Hey, Kessler, this is Felicia. I just wanted to step in really quick and remind everyone that your mic is currently muted. Therefore, if you have any questions, please ask them in the Q&A. 
Um, so I know I see some people that are raising their hands. Unfortunately, we will not be opening up the mic. So please type your questions into the Q&A. Um, if it's a direct question, if it's something that you're trying to uh, wanting to learn, please place that in the chat. Thank you. Great. So I see a question about um, I, just another question about the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. So Bluetooth uses Wi-Fi to communicate. So I think, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, so you do need to have like your phone or your device needs to be on Wi-Fi and then you connect your phone or device or computer in your settings. So you would go, you would um, turn on your machine and then you would go into your settings and find that device under the Bluetooth um, line on your on your phone and you would click on that and connect it to that to that device like I can take my joy and connect it to my desktop or my laptop or my um, tablet device and cut from that so what I can you don't you, you're not committed to having it only connect to one device it does connect to one device at a time but if you're using your phone one time and your tablet another time then, then you're good to go. Now, I did see a question about um, different materials. So I want to show a couple samples I have back here. <laughs> um, this pumpkin here, I, I made this pumpkin using iron-on um, vinyl. So the back, the background, that coffee color is an iron-on vinyl, and then I put this um, this grid of vinyl on top of it, iron-on. Now, I could have painted the pumpkin and then used just regular vinyl on top of it. I probably would have used a permanent vinyl so I could use it for years and years to come, but I just wanted to use this um, holographic type of uh, iron-on on top of it. So I chose, selected to do these all on iron-on. Now, this pillow, I used for my, uh, like my, what do you call that? Like my paintbrush look on the background. I used the iron on um, heat transfer, heat transfer. I used, what am I, I'm using the wrong word. Am I using the, which one are you? Iron on? Use blank. I use, use so for, <laughs> thank you, Lindsay. For the, um, for my paint strokes, I used infusible ink. And I, I put that on and that is like infused into the pillowcase. So I couldn't, I can't scrape it off or anything like that. That is gonna be there for forever. And then to create my get your spooky on, I, again, I used the iron on vinyl, same iron on vinyl as I used on here. I used the iron on vinyl and put that on top of the infusible ink design to kind of get this look. So I kind of have both. Now, not only did I use the infusible ink on the pillow, but you can also use infusible ink on mugs. And I have my mug rack here. <laughs> Welcome to my crazy studio. <laughs> this was um, a mug I made for Shark Week for my son, who's an avid Shark Week fan. And the infusible ink, so you know, when you get it out of the package, it looks like this. And then when you put it on and you heat it up, the colors just change and are so much more vibrant. So I, that's one thing you get out of the pack, you're like, how is my mug gonna look like hers did? And it's when it's heated up, it becomes part of the design and it's like, it's in there. Now, again, whereas my, my vinyl, you can kind of feel it. This is part of the mug and it's now, you can't take it off. It's gonna go through the washing machine, the dishwasher, over and over again. And um, he'll have his mug for years till he breaks it. Kesley, I've seen lots of questions about making t-shirts and what's needed to get started making t-shirts. If you could just go over that in detail, I think that would be very helpful to a lot of people. Absolutely. So a t-shirt is very much like my pillowcase here. You'll want to have your, your t-shirt bases and if you haven't been, I'm going to get plug, give a plug for Michael's. Their fall t-shirt colors, I have a stack. Let me show you. I have a stack of colors here that are just so yummy. 
I, they're so pretty. I don't want to put anything on them yet. <laughs> um, but so you, you'll find your t-shirts, whatever t-shirts you want to make. And then you, you pick out your iron on vinyl. And when you're working with iron on vinyl, anything that you heat set with heat, you want to, um, you, you want to mirror it. I saw that question about mirroring it. That's when you would mirror in design space. You would mirror that material, cut it on your machine, weed it out, and then you use an easy press to put that on your t-shirt and heat set it into your t-shirt or your pillowcase or, you know, whatever you're designing. So what you need is your t-shirts. And if you're using iron on vinyl, you can use any kind of t-shirt material you'd like to use. So you need a t-shirt, your iron on vinyl type, and an easy press. And the easy press comes in at least three different sizes. I have my mini somewhere. I use my mini all the time. That is, it's, it's like about that big and it just, it's portable. Um, it's a great little touch up, but if for something like this, and if you were doing a lot of t-shirts, I would get the bigger easy press. Um, you go online and there's a heat guide on the Cricut website that will help you determine how, how much heat you want, how long you want to keep it on there and everything like that. Um, like if you were doing, when I do my cheer bows, I'm going to go back to that reference. When I do my cheer bows, I use different types of materials. Let me just go grab something else. So this is actually um, a cheer bow in progress that I used a three inch grow grain ribbon. And I use the easy press for the infusible ink. This plaid, this buffalo plaid is an infusible ink material. And then I um, have the rhinestones that I use the easy press to put that on with too. So whether you're making a t-shirt or tea towels or pillow covers or pillow cases, um, you'll just have your base material and you wanna make sure that it is compatible. So if you're using the, um, he, if you're using infusible ink designs like this one, you need to make sure you have the right type of base material that will take that color. If you try and do um, infusible ink material on like a cotton, it won't come out as vibrant, as colorful as you are expecting it to. So that's, that's what you need. You just need your shirt, your material, and a, a heat press. And you can use, if you're just getting started, um, and maybe you you have like a finite budget, you can use um, an iron to put on infusible, I mean, to put on um, iron on vinyl. But what I would do recommend is you do it on a, on a hard surface um, because you wanna be able to press it down. And then, and then you will want to get a, an easy press machine because it really, it get, it's a, you have a much bigger base and so it gives even heat across the whole surface of your design. So when you're just doing um, like a little design, it's okay, you'll, get, you'll be fine. And as you're learning, it's okay and you'll be fine. But as you get more experienced, you'll probably want to upgrade to some sort of easy press, different sizes. But it is nice to have it because it gives consistent heat across what you're putting it down on. And so some, I did see a question about like which machine, if you just wanted to cut vinyl, which machine would you get? And that's a really great question because you're like, okay, each machine will cut vinyl. So which one do I need? And I, I would say like, it depends on where you're going to put the vinyl. So if you're creating, so let me go grab one other thing. <laughs> if you're, if you're creating um, on, um, sorry, let me, I have. I think I can get it. No, nope, I can't get it. Nope. Okay. If you're like a teacher, let's say you're working in a classroom and you want to use it to create bulletin boards, you may want to use the Cricut Joy where you can create a border for a bulletin board like this out of four feet of um, smart materials. If you are want to just do like Maybe let's say you want to do vinyl, but you're also thinking, but I would, I could use it for cards or I could use it for scrapbook pages. Um, then you may want to go with the explore and, and do that. Um, if you are want to use it for vinyl, but let's say you also sew, then you might want to go for the maker. So you can, I use 
that's what got me on the maker was I sew and I wanted to cut out American girl doll patterns and things like that. So that's what got me on the maker was the, was the um, ability to cut fabric. Okay, so what are the, do we have more questions? We got a couple more minutes. What is sublimation? So sublimation is, um, this is, we call it, Cricut calls it um, infusible ink, but sublimation is basically where the ink that you're putting onto the material sublimates into the fabric and into the fibers. So if you think about like, why do you need um, a certain type of material to sublimate into? It's because the sublimation ink, the way that it works is it, is it needs to go into the, it uses, it works with polyester fibers. So if this pillow, if I were using a cotton cover, the sub, the infusible ink would only cling to the polyester fibers. And that's why you get the light, you would get the lighter color. So sublimation ink and infusible ink are very similar. Okay, Kesley, you are answering all the good questions. Everybody has such good questions. No. So let me ask it, answer another one. Can you cut fabric with the air too? And Joy, you asked me to go over this before and I didn't. So the, the cutting mats, there's four different cutting mats that you can use with your um, maker. Well, you can really use them with all of the machines. Um, the green one, is the standard mat. And that cuts mostly with everything. So your vinyls, your iron-ons, um, some of your basic materials I would use with the green mat. There's a light grip mat, which is a blue color. And I primarily use that if I'm using fragile materials or if I'm cutting paper. Um, paper tends, if you, if you use like a heavier, it's the difference between the standard grip mat and the light grip mat is really the, the grip, the amount of grip each mat has. So when you're working with paper or lighter materials, you don't need to have as much grip and hold on the material as you do with some of the other materials. So I use my light grip mat, like I think of it mostly for paper, but I do use it on vinyls and iron-ons. The standard grip is vinyl, iron-ons, and you know, like, um, so, like if you have uh, leather, you can use the standard grip for leather. Then you have a pink mat, and that is the fabric mat used with the maker. And that is, um, you, you can put your fabric literally right onto that mat and use the rotary cutter and cut out a pattern with fabric on the maker. The last mat is the purple mat, and that is a strong grip mat. And that I use if I'm um, if I'm using the engraving tool, and I'm using like acrylic, or if you're cutting out bas basswood, and you need to really you have a thicker material, and you need to really hold it onto the mat. That's when I use the strong grip mat. And I do see people will have like um, they'll cut vinyl on a strong grip mat and have a, hard, a difficult time getting it off. Um, so you really can just mostly get everything cut on the standard grip mat. Oh, that's a good question, Rhonda. How do you clean your mat properly? I just keep um, a lint-free wipe, like a baby wipe. And after I use my mat, I just clean it off that way. There are instructions on the Cricut website that show you, tell you how to use uh, like a, like a Dawn detergent in, ro in a rotary method to clean it off. Um, once you clean it off though, it, it, the stick does come back. You might put it under water and clean it off and go, oh no, I lost my stick. It does come back. So um, be good and just keep your, each mat comes with a, a plastic cover on it. I keep my plastic cover on my mat to keep any dust or any pet hair or anything like that off of my mat. So I've been seeing lots of questions about materials which is interesting. You know, Kesley, we have a, Addie's asking a really good question right now. She's asking which machine is best for stickers and for t-shirts. 
Um, she's not sure about if it should be the maker or the explorer or, or which one. And I know this is a little bit more complicated question to answer. It's easier if you tell, if you talk through it. So that's a really good question. So when you want to make, um, use the print then cut feature, that's where you will go into design space and you'll select an image that you want to print on your home printer and then bring back to your machine and cut off of your machine. So the Cricut Joy does not offer the print then cut feature. So if you wanna make stickers, Cricut Joy is out. The Maker and the Explore and the Explore families both do the print then cut capability. And then they both will also cut vinyl. So, um, so either one of those machines, the Explore or the Maker family, either one of those machines would work. So if you're trying to decide between the two, I think I would ask myself, well, what additional materials do I want to make? So if you're thinking maybe you want to have a side hustle and you're, you want to make stickers to sell, or maybe you just want to make it for yourself, but then you also maybe want to make leather earrings, then I would say, I would encourage you to look at the maker a little bit more because it gives you more options. But if you're like, no, you know what? I'm really just going to cut out vinyl. Maybe I'll do a couple iron-on shirts. Maybe I'll try the infusible ink um, and I want to do print and cut. Then the Explore is a great option um, to, to meet those needs. Kesley, quite some time ago, Patty asked, um, once she gets her machine, is there like an estimated amount of money that you might spend on the accessories, like some of the tools or the easy press? Like how much do you think you would budget once you have the machine to kind of get some of the goodies? To get started. That's a really good question. And I would, um, I don't have a really good answer um, because it just, it, it varies on what you're going to do. So there is a, a bit of a learning curve. Um, and what I would recommend to anybody as you're getting started is to start with some paper projects, um, like learn how to use your machine and cut on cardstock. So you can go to Michael's and get a stack of cardstock, pretty inexpensive, and just learn how to cut that and make sure you know how to use design space and you know how to mirror images and you know how to cut cut lines across. Because you know when you buy a um, a roll of vinyl, like, and I think I was at Michael's this weekend and they had a good a good deal on um, the smart materials, so. If you, but even if you, whether you get it on sale or not, I, Joy, do you know the, what, what is the cost of, um, like in a roll of, of iron on vinyl? So, About, I think it's $7.99. Okay. So you've got to figure out how much of that roll of vinyl will you get for your design? So if you're doing a 12 by 12 design, you know, then if your vinyl's three feet long, you'll get three designs out of that vinyl. So then at $8 a roll, $7.99 a roll, it, your cost is, I can't do math that quickly, <laughs> um, but like two to $3 a cut. Um, so it really depends on how big you're cutting your design. So if you're getting started, what I would recommend is grab some t-shirts, and so learn how to cut on cardstock because that's pretty inexpensive. And then when you're ready to start cutting um, on your vinyl, just grab some t-shirts and a roll. You can even um, you know, get a color maybe that's on a super discount or something just so as your learning curve, you're not using like your glitter vinyl, um, which is a little bit more expensive than regular vinyl to make those initial cuts with. So I, I, it just, there's not really a good answer for your, co your cost analysis for getting started um, in that sense. It's true. It's, very, it's a very hard question to answer without really knowing exactly what you wanna make. I think, I think the rule of thumb with crafting, right? Is that 
we kind of collect a little, a little bit here and a little bit there. And all of a sudden we have everything we need and ask for things during your, for your birthday, for whatever our celebration is coming up or event, ask for cricket things and have your family help you. <laughs> and I do watch um, my, my Michael's flyers and when they have a good promotion, I will run in and be like, Ooh, I think I'm going to need these colors. Like, so Christmas is coming up. You might be grabbing green and red or Hanukkah. You might be grabbing blues and silvers, you know, so Thanksgiving's coming up. You may be, you know, grabbing your fall colors. Um, so I do tend to tend to stock up a little bit just in the anticipation of what I might be cutting in the future. Kesley, I just realized we are Ooh. out of time. We are. <laughs> we just chatted our way. We had so many people stayed and I kept continue to ask questions. Mm -hmm. There were some questions about user manuals. Mm -hmm. Those are available on Cricut.com, depending on the different machine that you're that you have. Um, and then please, if you did not get all the information that you needed or you still feel like you want more information. Michaels has uh, their YouTube channel with tons of Kesley's classes. Feel free to watch those and see if you can get a little bit more information. Continue to sign up for Cricut classes. We're always teaching you something new in class. And uh, we would really like to thank everybody for coming. And thank you, Kesley, for being such a great Cricut user and such a helpful person to everybody. I see all the thank yous coming up. So. Thank you, thank you, Kesley. And Lindsay and Felicia, of course, thank you too for all your help in the background. Hope everybody has a great day.